Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, waves. All waves have similar properties and it's important that you're able to describe them in terms of those properties. Uh, mainly this boils down to knowing the meaning of a few key words. So what I'm going to do in this video is run through the meanings of those key words. First, let's start out with the two key types of wave. Those are transverse waves and longitudinal waves. A transverse wave is the type of wave you're used to thinking about. It's the type of wave where you get a load of peaks that are at right angles to the direction that the wave is moving. So think about ripples on a pond where you get ripples up and down and you get those ripples moving sideways. Now the word they're likely to use on an exam paper here is perpendicular. We'd say that the displacement of the wave is perpendicular to its direction of travel. That just means that it's moving sideways but the peaks go up and down. The other type of wave is a longitudinal wave. Now this is a pressure wave where the displacement is in line with the direction of travel. It's parallel to the direction of travel. So if the wave is traveling horizontally, you get waves of compression moving horizontally as well. Typical examples of transverse waves are the waves which travel up and down the string of a stringed instrument as it's plucked, surface waves on water, or surface waves or S waves in an earthquake, and also the entire electromagnetic spectrum, including visible light. All of these are transverse waves. Longitudinal waves, on the other hand, are pressure waves such as sound. There are also P waves when we're talking about earthquakes, which are also longitudinal waves. A transverse wave will have what we call peaks and troughs. Those peaks and those troughs, they're the highest and the lowest points on the wave. Now the distance between two peaks or the distance between two troughs is known as the wavelength. It's simply the length of one wave and we'll normally measure that in meters. The height of the wave is known as the amplitude of the wave. Normally that's measured uh, from the height of the peak to the depth of a trough and then halved. The speed that the wave is moving is known as its velocity. All waves have a velocity, and so long as whatever they're moving through, known as the medium, so long as that doesn't change, then the speed doesn't normally change either. So you need to know what the wavelength is, you need to know the velocity, you need to know that term amplitude. Amplitude just relates to how much energy the wave is carrying. Now you can get similar things with a longitudinal wave, but it's a little more complex because a longitudinal wave will show areas of compression and rarefaction. So compression is where the particles, for example, the air particles, if it's a sound wave, where they're being squashed together. And rarefaction is the area between these areas where it's squashed, where it's being stretched apart. Now the distance between two parts, uh, two points of compression or two points of rarefaction, again, is a wavelength. The amplitude, this time, relates to how squashed the air is is and it's still going to have a velocity we often talk about the speed of sound well normally in air that's around about 300 meters per second the velocity of a wave that is how fast it's moving in meters per second and the wavelength of a wave in meters are both related to another key property of that wave and that is its frequency frequency is just how many waves pass a point every second and it's measured in units called hertz so a frequency of one hertz is just one wave per second moving past a point. Imagine if you were stood in the sea, paddling in the shallows, and one wave per second hit you, that would be a frequency of one hertz. If you have two waves per second hitting you, then that's a frequency of two hertz, and so on. Usually you won't be dealing with such low frequencies though. Those are very, very, very low frequencies. Usually you'll be dealing with uh, tens of hertz to hundreds of hertz to even millions of hertz. With velocity, frequency and wavelength, we now have an algebraic relationship, which we can represent with this equation. This is known as the wave equation. V for velocity equals F for frequency multiplied by this Greek letter lambda. Now, if you're not feeling so confident with those algebraic equations, then what I suggest you do is you check my video all about how to rearrange equations and that will run you through the process. Basically though, to be able to get that C in your GCSE, 
All you need to do is put numbers into this equation. So, let's have a look at a few examples. Remember, on the foundation paper, you won't need to rearrange this equation, you just need to put in the numbers which you're given. So you'll be given a frequency and a wavelength. Let's take, for example, a wave with a wavelength of 5 meters and a frequency of 10 hertz. The equation tells us that the velocity of the wave is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength, so we just multiply 5 meters by 10 hertz, and we get a velocity of 50 meters per second. If the wavelength was 1.5 meters and the frequency was 6 hertz, then 1.5 multiplied by 6 gives us a velocity of 9 meters per second. It's possible that they might give you values which aren't in standard units. Keep an eye out for things like millimetres or kilometres or possibly kilohertz. Remember, kilo just means a thousand. So one kilohertz is a thousand hertz. 20 kilohertz is 20,000 hertz. Likewise, milli just means one thousandth. So one millimeter is a thousandth of a meter or 0 0.001 of a meter. So if, for example, you've got a wavelength of one millimeter and a frequency of 200 hertz, you just do 0 0.001 multiplied by 200 and you should get an answer of 0 0.2 meters per second. There's just one more thing which you need to be aware of when it comes to waves. And that is that all of them can be reflected or refracted or diffracted. I'll go into more detail about exactly what these terms mean in another lesson. So for now, the key thing to remember is how to use the wave equation and what all your different key terms mean. So once again, they were amplitude, wavelength, velocity, frequency, transverse, longitudinal, compression, rarefaction, and perpendicular. I hope that video was useful to you. You now need to check your learning with the Snap Quiz. It'll only take a minute. The link is in the description along with all the other links for this video. You can also click just here to watch all the other videos which I've made. You can click just here to download my free app to help you with your revision. Or if you click just here, then you can subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to leave comments and likes. Good luck in your GCSEs and thanks very much for watching.